What is up, everybody? Chris Flick here. Chris Flick Podcast, episode number 159. Today, I want to call this episode Three Rules for a Parent. Maybe throw a question mark at the end of that because really, uh, push comes to shove, man. Everybody's situation is going to be different. These are three rules that I try to keep in mind in my own personal life that I think makes life as a parent, in our house anyway, a little bit easier. Now, rule number one is an easy one. Last night, our, one of our animals, man, we got a cat named Smudgy. She has some seizure-like behaviors. She was a low-maintenance cat that has now become a little bit more higher maintenance. I get up, I make sure that she has her food last night at a terrible hour, but Emmy says, Daddy, where are you going? She was in bed with us. I said, I gotta go take care of the animals. So I'm like, all right, maybe she'll go back to bed. I'll stay down here and start doing some work. She didn't. Dad! Dad! Come back up here! So I go back upstairs, hold my hand. I hold her hand, right? She's gonna get herself back to bed. She's holding Marisa's hand on one side, my hand on the other side. Rule number one, if your child extends a hand for you to hold, always accept it. That's one. I don't know where I read that. I don't know where I got that piece of advice, but once I heard it, I realized no matter what feelings are going on in that moment, hold that little kid's hand. Rule number two, if they can do it, let them do it. I've noticed this a lot with some grandparents or uh, somebody that may be a babysitter, a caretaker. They always want to do stuff for the kid all the time. And eventually, the kid starts to get a little bit annoyed by it and starts pushing back a little bit. Maybe, maybe they're not listening because they just want you to stop. Okay? So, instead of rushing around and doing everything for your kid, if it's something like letting them put their shoes on, have them do it. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make your life easier. It's going to make that situation a little bit easier. And it's going to give them the freedom and the autonomy that they can control their situation, that they could actually do something that grown-ups do, and that is going to build their self-esteem, their self-efficacy. It's going to, that little bit of autonomy and freedom is going to allow them to develop a good positive sense of self, right? Previous episode, I talked about the power of play and how playing through all these different situations builds those same systems, right? It allows kids to go through different things. It allows them to learn what they can do and what they can't do. If we want them to get a little bit better, right? If we want them to progress into becoming, um, you know, good pillars of society, right? Whatever you, whatever your aspirations are for your kid, um, we have to let them reach a little bit further than what they're capable of. How do you do that? They don't know how to put their shoes on, okay? You still have to let them try. If you do it for them over and over and over again, then it's going to prolong this problem. They're always going to go to mom and dad to put their shoes on. And one of those days when you're just going to need them to put their shoes on, they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to be calling for you to do it, all right? We all have those days, right, where we, we just need a second to ourselves or we need to get out the door in a, fast, in, a, in a period of time and I have to go upstairs and grab something and you need to put your shoes on, right? We all have those moments. All of those play, uh, allowing them to practice and to play around with their shoes on their own is going to allow for success when you need them to do it, okay? So you got to let them play, let them learn. There was a man, I think his name was Vygotsky, the zone of proximal development, right? With kids and all of these things, this is more than just the shoes, right? You want to speak to them in a way that might be a little bit more advanced than what they're capable of understanding. Why? Because eventually... They're gonna, well, it's going to force them to think a little bit more and ask some more questions. And then by doing so, they're going to learn, okay? You want them to try that balance beam a little bit higher or a little bit longer than they're used to, right? Let's let them reach a little bit outside of their comfort zone. And in the end of the day, they're going to be better, okay? The only way we could do that is if we let them do it, all right? So if a kid could do it, let them do it. Rule number three is stolen from a guy named Jordan Peterson, who in his book says, you know, never, basically his rule 11 is like never distract a kid while they're skateboarding, right? I don't skateboard, man. I'm, a, I'm not much of a risk taker. And I don't think my daughter's going to be much of a risk taker with the skateboard. But what this rule is all about is that if you don't allow kids to do things um, somewhat recklessly, we'll say, right? If you start to, if they're doing something dangerous and you're distracting them, one, that opens up the door for a potential injury, right? Your kid's trying to come down the stairs. If you're talking to them, giving them advice, the whole time while they're doing it, they're trying to focus and there you are as in a distraction, right? That could lead to some, some harm, right? Same with the skateboard. If a kid's about to rip a big trick, 
uh, the, the skateboard example, I mean, not literally the skateboard. If the kid is about to do something, right, they don't want to hear you in the background telling them what they should and should not be doing. Bend your knees. Do this. Make sure you follow through. You know, whatever it is, right? I'm talking about some sport examples now. Balance beams saying things like eyes up, eyes up, eyes up, look forward, do this, do that, right? All that is is a distraction. That distraction could lead to a failed attempt, right? That failed attempt in the skateboard example could lead to injury, right? Uh, the failed attempt coming down the stairs as a three-year-old could be a fall, right? We don't want that. Now, on the flip side of that, right? If you start to take away the idea of some of these risky behaviors, maybe this is rule number four. This is rule four. We're going four rules. If you take away some risky behavior, all right, if you just say we're not going to do it, guess what? Some of that behavior is going to start spilling over into other areas. If you uh, create this kind of safe environment for them, if you don't let those kids explore craziness during recess, teachers out there, what do you think is going to happen when, they, when, they, when they're in the classroom? They're going to take some of that recess behavior and bring it into the room and just wreak a bunch of havoc, cause a bunch of distractions. So we always have to remember the answer. Don't distract them when they're doing something crazy. Sorry, not crazy. Don't distract them when they're doing something challenging and potentially uh, risky, right? You want them to explore risk in a safe and uh, in a safe way, right? Explore risk in a safe way. That's rule number three. Rule number four is going to be we can't just put paddings on everything because there's going to be some spillover. You know, if you, in the skateboarding example, if you put up these like skate stopper things that don't let kids ride on the, you know, the, the handrails or to uh, grind their boards across something else, they're going to take that skateboarding behavior. Oh, we can't do it in this park. We're just going to go to the next building over, right? We're going to go to the next park over there. It's going to start spilling over into other areas that you didn't envision it spilling over by pulling down all the playgrounds, some of that behavior, that playful behavior, that roughhousing, that, that you know, pushing, shoving, whatever goes on at the playground might come into the home, right? It might come into the classroom. It might start showing up in other areas. So be careful. We cannot remove all unsafe things. We can explore risk in a safe manner. And then from there, we can't put the paddings on everything, right? Because if we do that, if we start to remove unsafe things everywhere we go, um, the kids aren't going to be prepared to handle unsafe things. That's number one. Number two, they're gonna find it somewhere else, all right? So be careful what you restrict, because there could be some spillover in other areas. So I guess we changed the name of this episode to four rules for a parent, um, four, four tips for parents? I don't know. I try to keep it all in mind, man. Um, I just developed these ideas because I basically read and listen and do some other stuff where I'll talk to some other parents and they they share what they like, what has worked for them, and what they think is going to be helpful. And that's kind of what I'm hoping to do here. I don't intend to be critical of anybody's parenting style if it comes off that way. Um, I'm hoping that's not how it comes off anyway, right? So I'm just trying to give you some ideas. These are all kind of just thought experiments. Everything that I talk about, all this stuff's going through my brain. You know, as I woke up to, to take care of our cat, literally a few days ago, they were like, you know, that inspiration it was a songwriter. It might have been the dude from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Anthony Kiedis, the lead singer. He's like, if you wake up at 2 in the morning and you have an idea in your brain, you better get out of bed and write it down. Because that idea came to you for some odd reason. And you better you better chant, you better remember that, right? You better write it down because that inspiration that just came to you at some random hour could become your next big song, right? It could be the next most impact it could be the most impactful lyric that you've ever had, right? So write it down. I had one of those moments last night. I didn't get up, so sorry. Red Hot Chili Pepper frontman Anthony Kiedis. I did not take your advice, but I did remember. All right. Um, I did remember what I wanted to discuss here, and those two rules became four. Maybe these four rules are going to become six. Maybe this is going to be, you know, maybe I'll just steal everybody else's idea and turn this into a little ebook or something like that. But Chris Fluke Podcast, available YouTube, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, ChrisFluke.net if you want to get in on my newsletter, right? You just put your email in there and, uh, we get you on the list, man. Every Sunday at 7.30 a.m., the weekly word comes into your inbox. All right, hope you guys like this episode. Peace, everybody.